Good afternoon. Across Britain's railway network, there are several instances of rolling stock being allocated to routes that really do not suit the trains. Let's have a look at three of them today. Let's begin with the most obvious of our examples. The Class 360s on London St Pancras International to Corby. These smart-looking EMUs first entered service in 2003 with First Great Eastern, but have been replaced by Class 720 units in recent years. Seen as the Midland Main Line had just been electrified from London St Pancras to Market Harbour and the extension off to Corby, East Midlands Railway decided to take the sets to use on their new EMR Connect service. So, where's the problem here? Well, it comes down to their interiors. I mean, look at this. It's 2 plus 3 seating, and it's getting very worn by now. It's absolutely diabolical. But this is just a connect surface, surely. There's nothing up with it, is there? Ah, yes. Well, let's take a look at the trains they replaced. Maybe now you'll see what I mean. The Class 222s were vastly superior when it came to passenger comfort. And I just feel for the poor, well, not poor, but you know what I mean, first-class passengers who've just gone from this to this. Okay, I apologise. It actually turns out that EMR don't offer first-class tickets on the Lynn St Pancras to Corby, so make of that what you will. Anyway, long story short, the 360s are very uncomfortable. But they don't have to be bad. I mean, take a look at the Class 350s, which are virtually identical, with the exception of the N gangways. They can have 2 plus 2 seating and tables, and they're very pleasant units to travel on. Okay, so what would the ideal refurbishment of the Class 360s look like? Well, let's start with first class. Maybe large 2 plus 1 seats, leather coated perhaps, separated from the vestibules, definitely by doors, that'd be good. It would keep the noise out. In standard class, maybe a really nice geometric carpet shape with tables, 2 plus 2 seating. The Desiro standard seat would work fine. Hold on, this is all sounding a bit familiar. Ah, yes, uh, it's essentially a Class 185 interior. And this would work really well in the 360s. You wouldn't have to change anything. The proportions are more or less the same. In fact, the 360s are essentially just electric 185s. So something like this, but with purple instead of blue, would be fantastic for EMR. Now, something like this actually was planned, and I believe still is. But it's not been able to go ahead, and why? Well... The DFT. They've refused to allow EMR to do this refurbishment, which is really disappointing, as I think it needs to happen. It's really going to be a discouragement for people trying to take the train. To be honest, I think refurbishment needs to stop being viewed as a needless luxury by the DFT, and rather as something that's necessary if we want to extend trains' lifespans and make them more appealing for future use, rather than just buying new trains every 20 years. Okay, next up is probably the worst and most blood-boiling of all of the three today. The Class 165 and 166s on Portsmouth to Cardiff. And also the Respiry lines, but less so. Mainly Cardiff to Portsmouth. Let's start from the beginning. So the Class 165 and 166s were introduced in the early 1990s by British Rail to operate commuter services out of London Paddington on the then unelectrified Great Western Main Line. However, over the past few years, Said Great Western Main Line has been electrified, and therefore there's not really been any need for these diesel services. As a result, the 165 and 166s have been moved out westwards to operate regional services over there. And this is where the problems arise, as the 165s and 166s are just not designed for this type of service. They're hopeless when you compare it to the 158s that used to operate them. Whilst in the latter you had tables, 2 plus 2 seating, very comfortable, end vestibules, pleasant travelling environment. In the 165s and 166s you end up with 2 plus 3 seating, no carpet in the 165s, really noisy engines, 1 third, 2 third vestibules, and just generally an unpleasant place to be. How is this a step up? Now, Cardiff to Portsmouth is a pretty busy working. It's definitely regional express, if not into city and is used by very many people who expect a reasonably high standard of comfort. And rightly so. It takes quite a time to operate this journey. Well, apparently it sort of seems that there was a plan to refurbish them to 2 plus 2 seating at one point. Great. Why hasn't this happened? This would improve the trains a lot. 
Uh, I think you can guess. Well, it's the DFT. It seems that they said this would decrease capacity, which, well, yes, it would, obviously, but they have to understand that this is a regional express service. People shouldn't be forced to sit in the middle of a 3 plus 2 seating. No one wants to do that. They also expect a table and actually a comfortable seat. Sadly, it seems GWR have given up on this idea and are now refurbishing their trains with the same 2 plus 3 layout, which unfortunately gives the impression that they're never going to receive it. The 2 plus 2, that is. Well, they can't go back to 158s. They need the extra capacity. If only there was a reasonably sized fleet of regional express DMUs that are very capable of this sort of operation, have comfortable 2 plus 2 seating, are just coming off lease and are looking for a new home. Oh yes, the uh, class 175s. This might sound a bit crazy, but I actually think these would be a perfect fit for this route. They're perfectly capable of being coupled together into four, five, or six coach formations, which is ideal. And they're very well laid out for this sort of thing. They're also very high quality trains, and it would be a shame for them to go to waste. They're only 20 years old. Now, admittedly, their reliability leaves a little bit to be desired, but I'm sure they can get around it. It's worth remembering that GWR did actually operate the very similar Class 180s just before, so they know how to deal with unreliable trains. And Karadias. If GWR also took TFW's pretty sizable fleet of Class 158s when they become redundant, then they could gather together a fleet of about 50 trains, which would be enough, really, to replace the 165s and 166s on both Westbury and Portsmouth to Cardiff services. The turbos could then move even further west to replace the Class 150s down in Devon and Cornwall. That would be amazing. Those trains really need to go. Now is this actually going to happen? I highly doubt it. But I think it would be a very good idea nonetheless. Now the final instance of terrible rolling stock application that we'll be looking at today is the Class 387s on Great Northern Fire Services to Cambridge and Ely. Do I need to really say anything? Let me just show you a picture of the interior. Yep, that's right, ironing boards. This is pretty terrible for a high status service, if you ask me. Oh, and don't get me started on first class. It's basically indistinguishable from standard. Why would anyone pay for this? Now, what would seem to be a good train for this route would be the Class 379. They're pretty similar, they just have slightly more comfortable seats, and the first class is like nothing else. I mean, look at it. Oh, hold on. I think this might have been planned too. It, why is everyone stealing my ideas? Oh, okay, hold on. It's been stopped, oh, by, uh, oh, the DFT, uh, again. They don't want to pay the high leasing costs for the 379s, which, hmm, fair enough. They're pretty expensive. But I think it also has to be considered that they're significantly better trains. And I think in the long run, well, the short run as well, actually, it's important to have comfortable rolling stock. So I think it'll be worth the cost. Well, there you go. There were some of my opinions on terrible rolling stock allocation. I hope you enjoyed it. It was something slightly more light-hearted than usual. Somehow it managed to turn into a DFT bashing video. That was not intentional. I'm not trying to push some political agenda. Anyway, I'd like to thank Karl Marx for sponsoring this video, you for watching it, and you may wish to join my Discord server on the way out. I'd very much appreciate it. But regardless, I'll see you next time, and goodbye.